All right, welcome back to another episode of Science with Serbak. Today we jump right back in where we left off from the last section of notes, and we expand on our talk about the atom. Now, specifically what we're going to be talking about is the subatomic particles and the nuclear atom. Before we get going into notes, there is a few objectives I would like you to be able to meet by the end of this video. So objective number one is to distinguish between the subatomic particles in terms of relative charge and mass. And objective number two, describe the structure of the nuclear atom, including the locations of subatomic particles. So before we get going into notes, I want to tell you and write down here on notes where we left off, okay? So Dalton, Dalton produces this theory based on evidence that says a matter is made of atoms. However, I told you in section one notes that one part of Dalton's atomic theory was incorrect. And that was the portion of atoms being indivisible. In reality, atoms are indivisible because they can be divided into smaller parts we call subatomic particles. And the subatomic particles that we in this class are gonna be interested are things such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so what we do specifically in this section is we identify how those subatomic particles, the protons, neutrons, electrons, were discovered and what the implications are for atoms. So we start out here with the discovery of the electron and we start out here with Sir William Crookes. And so what he did is he conducted an experiment using a cathode ray. And so think of the cathode ray as a beam of light that was charged. And so this cathode ray here, uh, you can see his setup. He had a vacuum tube, which means nothing but that, that charged beam of light went through the tube. And what he did is he set it up so that the cathode was the negative point, so that was the negatively charged portion, and the anode was the positive point. And the voltage or the light went from the negative to positive end. What happened here is this. What Mr. Crookes did, or, or William Crookes did, is that he conducted an experiment where he took a a uh, piece of paper and he actually noticed that there was uh, a beam of light and he could detect that particular beam of light and that's what we're referring to as that radiation. Now the importance about all of this is that this beam of light or these these particles in this Crookes tube contained a negative charge. So what they did was conducted more and more experiments and what they found was that this negative charge was a piece or part of the atom. So these cathode rays or the, the beam of light, if you wanna think about it like that, they are going to contain a negative charge. Now, the big important portion of this is that these negative charge become what we call the electron, which the electron is a negatively charged particle found in an atom, and they're found in all matter, okay? So again, what we get here is very significant because of proven experiments. So you see here that the uh, same cathode ray was produced no matter the variation of matter. And this is proving, this is, is, is very major in proving that all matter contains this negatively charged part, which we call the electron. All right, so now 
we turn to another scientist to find out a little bit more about the atom. And we go to J.J. Thompson. And so what he did... Um, just a quick reminder. What Thompson did was he found the ratio of cathodes rays charge to its mass. And you may be wondering, okay, well, what's the significance of that? Well, based on this charge to mass ratio, he could better calculate this magnetic field, okay? So determining the magnetic field could also help prove, well, what is, is, is also inside this particular atom? And so what he did was this. He ran several, several experiments, hundreds of experiments, and he's comparing the ratio of this cathode ray charge to its mass, and he found that the uh, he found that the mass of the charged particle was much less than that of the hydrogen atom. And so what he did specifically is he said, okay, this piece that's negatively charged has to be an electron. What also is significant is this. He knew at the time that an atom was neutrally charged, meaning it had an equal protons and electrons. And so what he did was he was the first to propose what an atom would look like. So he said, this is going to look like a plum pudding or better known to you and me as a chocolate chip model. So inside here, this, this grayed area is a positive orb or a positive charge, and these little red spheres were their electrons that were stuck in the middle of that positive charge. So not only do we have the piece or the part known as the electron, but we also, we also know that the electron can help play a role in identifying what an atom looks like. All right, so we keep going here and we go to Robert Milliken. Again, we want to go further and further with this electron. And so what he does is he runs an, uh, another experiment using this oil drop apparatus that is seen in your upper right hand corner. And what he did was he wanted to find the relative charge of an electron. So what he found was that they had a negative charge, which we've concluded that the electron was negative and it had a charge of negative one. Now, what happened as a result of this is that we say, okay, an electron has a negative one charge, but they knew matter was neutral. It had no charge. So if there's electrons present, that means that there's probably a positive piece or a positive portion that is also present. They also question this. All right, because of J.J. Thompson's experiment, which found that charge to mass ratio to be very, very small, they said, hey, the mass of an electron is very small, but where does the mass of the atom come from? And so now they're raising questions, okay, there has to be another piece inside the atom that is going to counter not only the charge, but also account for most of the mass, all right? So now, again, we have a good picture, we have a good model of the atom, but we need to expand on that. And so this is where we get into a better picture of the atom. Again, that's, that's what science is all about is we develop some type of theory, we pick apart what the flaws may be, and we enhance our knowledge. So along came Ernest Rutherford, and he was looking at these positive charged alpha particles. And what he was doing was a gold foil experiment. So he had a alpha particle emitter, that's this silver box here shown in that picture, and he shot him straight at the gold foil. And 
What he did here is, this is shown by a green ring, is he was able to detect where that particular alpha particle went after it struck that gold foil. What the results he got uh, were very interesting and very unique. So with his expected results, he expected, based on J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model, that most of those particles, and these particles are shown here by this black line where my finger is running across, most of them should go through. Maybe you have a slight deflection here or there, but most of these will go through. However, what happened was this. He had most of the particles go through, just as he thought. However, there was these major, there was these major deflections of those alpha particles. Now, he also knew that like ch charges repel. So he shot an alpha particle, which was positively charged. It deflected greatly. And so he concluded, he said that, hey, that particle that got deflected very, very significantly must have hit another charged particle. And that charged particle must be positive because I shot a positive ray or positive beam at that particular sample. So now his results, his results are very significant. He says, he says here that, all right, Thompson's model was a good base, but it's incorrect. Because if Thompson's model was correct, those beams of alpha particles should go straight through. However, what happened here is that these particles were significantly deflected. And so what he did, there's two major things that Rutherford concluded. And that was this. One, atoms have to be composed of empty space. And that was proven because of the beams here, the alpha particles, they mostly went straight through. He also said that, hey, there is a nucleus, and this nucleus is going to contain two things. One, most of the mass of the atom, and two, this positive charge, okay? Now, he, he later, we later talk about this, this positive charge, what it is, but now we have a very clear picture of a particular atom. So to give us, to, to wrap this all up here with Rutherford here, we had this, we have the center, the center, which is composed of positive parts. And remember, he's gonna call this the nucleus. And around the outside of the nucleus, there are these negative charged particles that were already found and known as the electrons. Now, all of the other space here, all of the other space here, which I am going to just circle in, in red here, just one portion, this portion here, this is all empty space. And so this was the major contribution that Rutherford made and we now have a revised model of the atom. So let's go ahead and go to the last couple of slides here about what happens here with Rutherford's experiment, okay? So we have, again, nucleus and a positive charged particle in the center. So now with this, we get to conclude what Rutherford did or what Rutherford said. So he said, hey, we have to count, counter that negative one charge of the electron in the nucleus, the center, and we're gonna call that the proton. So the proton is the subatomic particle that carries an equal but opposite charge of an electron, meaning there's a positive charge or positive one charge in the proton, and it's in that center, it's in that nucleus. What we also had to conclude was this, the number of protons and electrons in a particular atom didn't add up to give all of the particular mass. 
So they did some more experiments and they found another piece or particle in that center of the atom and it was known as a neutron. Now a neutron has a neutral or no charge and it is in the center of the particular atom. Okay, so again, the neutron is in the nucleus. Let me pause and write that down. Again, in nucleus. And I probably should have had you write that down as well. So now, the conclusion after all of this, the once thought, or the, the, what Dalton theorized as an atom not being able to divide it, we now have three pieces of a particular atom. We have an electron, which is negatively charged. It's around the outside of the center of the atom. We have a proton, it's positive. It is in the center. And we have a neutron, which has no charge, and it is in the center. This right here is the foundation for what we have in chemistry. So now we literally have our building blocks, our starting point for our particular atom. And now we can really start to get into the significance that this plays into chemistry. So we went through a lot. Let's sum some things up. Number one, an atom is neutrally charged. That means it has equal positive and equal negative parts. Those parts are equal protons, positive, and electrons, negative. They are spherically shaped. The only way that, that Rutherford was able to conclude his experiments or calculate those deflected rays was by discovering the shape, and they said they were sphericals. The atom is contained mostly of empty space and these fast-moving electrons along the outside. They also said that there's so much positive charge in the center, it is going to attract or hold or contain those particular electrons into that nucleus. And the nucleus contains the protons and neutrons and makes up almost all or most of its mass. The other thing I want to reemphasize is the number of protons in a particular atom is equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. All right, so we've went over a lot. We now have a very good picture of what the atom consists of, and we now have a, a bright future or a basis for what we can start to further explain uh, what is happening with chemistry. Hope you have enjoyed this episode, and as always, make sure you subscribe.